surprised he didn't pop his head in. <clears throat> so that is the allocation. Tie-in agreements. You cannot force someone to buy the bad thing to get to the good thing. I'll sell you the mansion, but you got to buy the swamp as well. That is called a tie-in. Black and Decker got caught for this about two years ago, three years ago, with their staple guns. They were forcing people to have to buy their staples because their staple guns only use their staples. All right. So there are four or five business things. These are business things, not real estate. Meaning Walmart abides by these just like I abide by these. They all abide by the same thing because they're a business law. Now, here's the penalty. Get this. You get caught violating these. Remember, this is federal law. You could be fined as an individual a million dollars and 10 years in prison. So I can literally see it now. What are you in for? Murder. What are you in for? Tie-in agreement. Da -da -da -da. Or if they're a business, they can be sued for up to $100 million. <coughs> and if you think you have been violated, you can actually get what's called treble damages. Treble is the legal word for three, triple, plus court costs. So you can recover court costs and triple your damages if you have, in fact, been violated. Now, let's talk about a couple more words. We have touched on this topic before where I've mentioned that terminology is a very important game here. Here's another example that you will see where people will make a mistake and you've got to understand what they were saying. Here is this first word I wanna talk about. Realtor, it is pronounced realtor, not realtor or realtor, realtor. All capital letters and it has a trademark. It is an owned word by this company. The National Association of Realtors. It is a reserved word. Do not confuse that word with this word. That is a license level that you may possess. This is a broker. This realtor is a member of the NAR. So in theory, you can be licensed and not be a member of the NAR. You are in fact, not a realtor. You are a licensed professional, all right? This happened to me a lot. There for about four or five years, I was only selling commercial property and was not a member of our board of realtors. So therefore, I was not a member of the NAR. People would go, what do you do for a living? I'm like, well, I sell commercial real estate. And they were all like, oh, you're a realtor, huh? And I literally would say, yeah, because I don't want to have to explain it to you. But in fact, I was not a realtor because I was not a member of the union. That's how I want you to look at this. Let me go back and share this again. You guys have heard of this word. We've thrown it around. My board. Middle Indiana Board of Realtors. This is the union you will join when you get your license. Now. Why would you join this? Because it has one special tool 
that you want to get at. The MLS system. The MLS system is only sold to members of the My Board. So if you're not a member of My Board, you do not get the MLS. Well, the MLS deals with what? Residential properties. So I told you I was a commercial broker. Commercial brokers don't need residential properties Therefore, we don't need the MLS. Therefore, we don't have to join the board. And if that's the case, we are not realtors by definition. All right. Now, if you join, let's go back and clean this up a little bit. If you join my board, I'm sure you guys have all heard the horror stories about it being eleven to fifteen hundred dollars and all of that. That is true. But because, and here's why it's true, because when you pay your money to MyBor, it also joins to what they call, guess what this one is? IAR. That's the Indiana Association of Realtors. Plus, you also get membership to this one. The National Association of Realtors. So think of my bore is a local union. We have we have a uh, Richmond Board of Realtors, a Bloomington, Greater Lafayette, a Fort Wayne, all of those throughout the state. You, since you are in one of the middle Indiana counties, will join the MIBOR, and that money you pay will also include your state association and your national, and you will in fact be able to use the word Realtor and get your little logo and pin and all that cool stuff, all right? So there's a difference between broker and Realtor. Broker is a level of license, like I have a broker's license, you will get a broker's license. Realtor just means I am a member of the NAR. The member of the NAR on page 126 has a professional ethics code. How do you treat other agents or how do you treat your client? There are specific rules. I sit on the grievance committee and just Wednesday, did we have, by phone, by the way, first time ever, we had our grievance meeting where we listened to one agent complain about another agent and then determine if that agent was in fact in violation. <clears throat> they are all based upon the code of ethics. And this is where you, Sarah's gonna go, Oh, Christina, talk to my client. That's a violation. I want to file a complaint. It goes in front of the grievance board. I sit and listen to it and go, yeah, I think that's probably a complaint. So the 13 of us vote and we vote. Yeah, fine her 500 bucks for doing it. And then tell her why. So there are a procedure if you violate this code of ethics. Now, we are not going to go over the 17 code of ethics in this course. All you need to know is it is a professional standards set by the NAR on how we act towards each other. Remember one of the points of license law? It defines how we act towards each other or our client. Any questions so far? Are we doing okay? I know Ross has had some technical issues a couple times, but everybody else seems to be doing pretty good. Ah, huge finger. I'm gonna squish you. <laughs> What's, what was that, Saturday Night Live? Squish your head. No, okay, who cares? 
on page <laughs> Page 127, technology. This section is hard to teach because by the time we finish it, it's going to change. I literally mean that, okay? This field has become so technologically pervasive. It is amazing what I've seen in 20 years. What you guys now take for normal. So now I really sound like the old man in this group. When I started... We had three ring binders, all right? And my bore would mail us listings. We would literally open our listing binder and take out one that sold and put a new listing in. And a client would come into our office, park in our parking lot, and walk in and go, I want to see your listings book. We would go, here you go. They would take the book and sit at the desk and go, oh, that house looks nice. And we would take it out, copy it, and hand the MLS to them and go, okay, now, do you want to go see it? Get in my car, and I'll drive you over to see the house. Before that, I got to go to the listing agent and get the key, which they keep in their office, so that I can show the house. That sounds stupid. That's how it worked. Now, fast forward just 14 years. Now, 